In this video, I will show you how I made a silver and wood ring with a stone setting from start to finish. Please feel free to leave me a comment with any questions and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. This video is brought to you by Skillshare.com. Skillshare gives members unlimited access to over 20,000 classes for just $15 per month or $99 for the year. As an ambassador of Skillshare, I can offer you two free months membership. There are thousands of classes to help you learn new crafting skills, someone's even made a class about bentwood rings, or to improve on all aspects of your creative business, such as product photography, social media, search engine optimization, and many more. Simply click through the link in the description to sign up and get two free months membership today. Now on with the video. This ring started life as a sheet of 0.8mm sterling silver. The first task was to cut a length of the silver to form my ring. I used a formula to figure out how much silver to cut and the jeweler's saw made easy work of it. Here's the formula just in case you're wondering. To make the silver soft and easy to form, I annealed it using a blowtorch, heating it until it glowed cherry red. I gave it a chance to cool down and then I used a round nose pliers to roughly form the silver ring to shape. Before soldering I made sure that both edges that would form the seam of the ring were filed completely flat and fit together tightly. Next I bathed the silver in a pickling solution to make sure it was nice and clean for soldering. Soldering silver is fun and I'm no expert but this is how I did it. I put a little soldering flux over the seam of the ring and placed a few tiny pieces of easy solder on top. I moved the flame with a blowtorch around the ring to heat it evenly before concentrating on the seam. The flux bubbles up then kind of caramelizes and that's when I focused the flame on the pieces of solder until they melted into a liquid uh, just like T1000 from Terminator 2. I probably went a bit overkill but it worked and that's what really matters. Okay so there is the ring after soldering uh, and I've just put it in a pickle for like half an hour-ish to get some of the fire scale off. So the next thing to do is uh, to size this ring up uh, and also to uh, polish the insides and get it all nice and shaped, nice and cool, ready for the wood. Let's go! I made the ring slightly undersize, so I needed to make it a bit bigger. To do this, I annealed it and then hammered it on a metal mandrel until it was the correct size. I used a rawhide hammer here which didn't leave any marks on the ring. The next step was filing and sanding the outside and the inside of the ring to clean up the seam and give it a bit more shape. I used a few grits of emery paper to give the ring a smooth texture and then sanded the edges using a figure of eight motion on my desk to make the edges nice and even. With the silver portion made, I was back on familiar territory as it was time to make the wood bits. I used a fairly standard bent wood ring technique with walnut bill veneer to make the outside. I just sliced the length of veneer and the wood was pliable enough to start wrapping it around the silver right away. Win! To stick the wood to the silver, I used a medium thickness super glue. And in the end, I glued two layers of the wood to the silver ring and even out the overlapping edges by sanding them on the table with my classic figure of eight motion. Okay, so, so far we've got ourselves a silver ring uh, with uh, wood wrapped around the outside of it. 
I've leveled the sides um, and sanded them up to like the highest grit I possibly could, which was 12,000 grit. So the next thing to do is put the inlays in. The first inlay in this ring was a band of silver offset to one side. I scored a line using a marking gorge and then used a triangle file to carve the channel deep enough for my silver wire. I cut just a bit too much silver to fit into the channel, so I used a file to trim down the edges until it was a nice fit with minimal visible seam. Next, I glued the silver wire into the ring using super glue and then sanded it flush with a few grades of sandpaper. With the silver inlay done, I applied a full finish to the ring. I used 10 layers of medium thickness superglue over every surface of the wood. This finishing technique is not for the faint hearted and is tricky to master, but it does come over time. With my finish on, I drilled a hole using a tiny burr I found in the dusty corners of the workshop. I was scared at this point, but I managed not to destroy the ring and made a nice hole ready for my stone setting. So here's the ring so far. Uh, silver liners made, wood's on. Uh, I drilled a little, little hole, if you can see it. Drilled a little hole for the uh, bezel set in there. Uh, so now I'm going to go on the lathe, uh, get it all polished up before making that bezel fit. I polished the inner silver portion of the ring with emery paper and then used standard wet and dry for the edges and the outside of the ring. To make the super glue finish super shiny, I worked my way from 400 grit wet and dry to 12,000 grit micro mesh. This brought it to a ridiculous mirror shine. The final stage was stone setting. I had a piece of spectralite cut especially for this piece and had it set into a bezel cup, so all I really needed to do was make a hole big enough for it to fit into. I set the stone with epoxy resin, cleared away any excess ooze with a paper towel and waited for it to cure. After a quick blast of triply and rouge polishing compounds inside, the ring was ready to go to the engravers. That's it for this one. That's a silver ring with walnut bill, a silver inlay, and a stone setting. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment, let me know what you think. Uh, and come and follow me on Instagram at Zebrano Woodcraft. Uh, or subscribe to my YouTube channel. See you in the next one. Blah!